Greetings, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're here to worship God, and also today it's uh, the 2nd of July, so we're coming into the 4th of July. So we're going to sing a couple of patriotic songs. Um, number 799 in your hymn book, America the Beautiful, will be our first one. Please stand. As we celebrate Independence Day, Independence Day greetings to you all. Our nation is free, and we are all free. We're going to be hearing a sermon about true freedom in a little while, but we are so thankful and grateful for this great nation, and we, we are thankful for God for providing this freedom to this great nation and keeping us as forerunners for the rest of the world. Well, thank you for coming this morning and celebrating God together as a body of Christ. 
If you are here for the first time, we welcome you in Jesus' name. If you are here for more than once, we still welcome you in Jesus' name. But for the newcomers, there's a little card in front of your pew with, uh, where you can put your visitor information because you're visiting us for the first time. And we hope that you would make this church your home if you're in the area and settling in the area. So you can put your information there and we'll be in touch with you. We also have a section behind that card for prayer requests. You can also use that card for prayer requests and, and put it in the offering plate as it comes by. But right now, as we are going into the service, we have several elements of the service that, uh, that will reflect back to our freedom. And right now, we have our responsive reading coming up. But thank you for coming again. And let's celebrate God. Good morning. If you uh, have your Bible or if you uh, want to take out uh, the Bible in front of you in the pew and turn to uh, Corinthians, uh, that would be great. Third chapter and uh, verse 1 through 4 and then 12 through 16. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. For you have died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. of Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. I just uh, want to uh, just also comment uh, Fourth of July is coming up and uh, you know it's one of those things but I just want to say to all the veterans uh, welcome home Thank you for your service, and thank you for all of your sacrifice. Your sacrifice not only to you that you've given, but also your friends, your families, your neighbors. And that's very important for uh, everyone to know. Thank you. Almighty wise and merciful Jehovah God, I'm thankful that you have allowed us to assemble in your house and worship and praise you. Father, I thank you for our pastor, Matt. He's not here today, but we thank you for him. He has led the youth on a mission to Arizona along with other adult members of the church. I pray that it will be a great learning experience for all the young people in attendance. Father, please keep the entire group safe and in your grace and bring them home safely. Father, as we, we are so thankful for this great nation of ours, the United States of America. As we approach Independence Day, Lord, Father, please keep your loving arms of protection around each and every American who is traveling on the highways and those who are flying. Take them to their destination 
safely and return them home safe. And Father, please help each and every one of us who are celebrating in this city and this state to be responsible to, and pray. And now we pray, Father, let us all pray the very prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is your kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for hymn number 807, My Country, Tis of Thee. again. Could we bow in prayer as we bring, come to the time to give our gifts and offerings back to God. Oh, Father, thank you for this day and thank you for this church of yours. And we come to this church to praise you and to work for you and to support missions wherever they are throughout the world. Help us to give graciously and let us know that God loves a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I know I was a little uh, late coming up to the mic, but this is the time where you get up and uh, shake one another's hands and greet each and everybody here, somebody that you don't know, probably say hello and introduce yourself. And we're going to go into our next section of our service. Welcome to First Baptist Church. It is such a joyful place here, a great body of Christ. And you are the church. Don't think that this beautiful building is the church, okay? This, this building houses you, the church. So thanks for being a part of this body of Christ. We have a couple of announcements. One is I would like for you to pray, keep in prayers, all those that need prayers, which is everybody. Everybody need prayers. But those that are sick, those that are recovering, those that are in the hospital, those that are uh, under medication, whatever it may be, that, that are um, battling some kind of a sickness, we have a few of our brothers and sisters that are going through certain things. And please keep our body and those that are calling upon God you know, join with them in prayers for quick recovery and healing and all good gifts from God to come and, you know, that we can receive it. We also have our pastor. Um, we have uh, Leslie. We have Trudy and Bill. Sorry, Trudy and Steve Bills. Uh, who are in Arizona right now, they have taken a group of young people from our church and some uh, fellow um, CB, uh, the, the Central Pacific Region American Baptist Church uh, members. It is a great time for the young people to go and experience and learn and serve. For some, it is the first time. For some, it is a repeated, um, you know, kind of a mission trip. But regardless of that, this is a great opportunity for the future church. You know, these young kids, they are our future. They are the future leaders of this church and this nation. We want to create godly people in this country. That's what we need in this country. And so here is the beginning. So keep them in prayers. We need more people, more young people to come and be a part of this group so that they can join together, share and pray and grow and take the love of God into this world. So as they do this, continue to keep them in prayers. Continue to keep our country in the prayers, in your prayers. Our country needs a lot of prayers. We also are celebrating the freedom of our nation, the Independence Day is just two days away. Or, you know, it's coming up, Tuesday. For some people, it's, it's just a very long weekend of fun and celebration. For some, it has been a very painful battle that they had to fight for this country. And we want to thank them. 
all those who fought for this nation. In celebration of this event, we also have some wonderful lunch that is provided for us this afternoon. Please stay and be a part of that. I want to thank all the volunteers that took care, especially Kathy. I don't know if Kathy is here, but there she is. And uh, Vicky and all the great volunteers that are helping us on a regular basis. Because most of our people are out. They're traveling. And we still are able to do great things. So that means that we have some awesome people. We have some great children's and youth programs. So if you know of any children or youth, please um, invite them to church. Invite those families to church. It is an awesome time for the young people to be a part of God's, you know, community. And so we have several events coming up. If there are some shy kids, I have one in my house, and, um, you know, but I drag uh, my kids to church, so they have no option. But if you know of any shy kids, there are some great events that they can go to, um, as you can see, um, which they don't need to, you know, step foot in the church building, but they can still be a part of this group. And once they get acquainted with their friends and with, with the program, they can come into the church. That's a great program, you know, that our church has uh, partnered with other churches through the J13 program to offer some really wonderful time. Uh, you know, like going for, to a bowling uh, event or going out just to meet people and things like that. It is really wonderful. There are more events like this in our newsletter. If you haven't found our newsletter yet, it would be out in the desk or it will be in our website, on our website. Please make sure that you read our newsletter. Um, you know, we have some good articles there, some wonderful events. Um, there's some good calendar for the next three months. If you have anything in mind that you want to attend and all that stuff, there you go. So I don't want to take up a lot more time, but I wanted to spend this time meditating and thanking God for the freedom that he has given to us in this nation. I want to also thank the great people that was responsible for the freedom of this nation, the freedom that you and I celebrate today. You know, I was born in a different country, and I can guarantee you that there is no other nation like this nation. It could have all its, you know, opinions that is coming from everywhere. I've traveled a lot of countries, but there is no other country in the world that I have been to as good as America, where each and everybody has so much of freedom, Amen. and it did not come free. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for each and everybody that went and fought for this nation, that are still out of this nation, protecting this nation, inside this nation, protecting this nation. We have so many good men and women in our, in our congregation. We're so, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with all of them. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing, continuing to love this country. And we want to pray for this nation. I, I did, I, I want to remind you again and again, our, our country needs a lot of prayer. We need to protect this freedom. And we want to cherish this freedom for our, the next generations. Let's pray. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you we praise you, and we love you. You are a God who loves freedom. And you have given it to all mankind, Lord. And we thank you because, because of you, because of your son, Jesus Christ. We are free today. And thank you for giving that concept of freedom to this nation, to this great nation, so that we all can enjoy it. And we thank you for all those men and women who were responsible for protecting this nation and for fighting for this nation. Lord, we ask that your mercy and grace 
continue to be upon this nation. That we will not run away from you, but honor you and worship you and thank you for everything that we have in our life, especially in this nation. We pray that this freedom that we enjoy in this nation will be spread across the world, that others may enjoy in their own homelands. After all, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, for all humanity. And America has been fighting for the world. A lot of countries have benefited. And Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love you. And we thank you for each and every day of our life, celebrating your goodness and the freedom that we have in this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, isn't it? We have much to be grateful for in this great country. Um, today's reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 10 to 13, and chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. And it will be from the Amplified Bible. How many have... Uh, been uh, conversant with the Amplified Bible. I never knew about it until uh, Pastor Sam said that it was his preferred uh, version. Uh, and uh, so I looked it up on the internet and uh, got a little bit of information on it. Um, as you will notice, uh, as we go along here, there will be words, phrases in um, brackets, and uh, these are not part of the original uh, translation, but they're amplifications to help us understand the scripture more fully. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will adopt no other view contrary to mine in the matter but the one who is disturbing you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. But as for me, brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, as I, I have done before I met Christ, and as some accuse me of doing now as necessary for salvation, why am I still being persecuted by Jews? In that case, the stumbling block of the cross to unbelieving Jews has been abolished. I wish that those who are troubling you by teaching that circumcision is necessary for salvation would even go all the way and castrate themselves. For you, my brothers, were called to freedom only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the sinful nature, worldliness, selfishness, but through love, serve and seek the best for one another. But far be it for me to boast in anything or anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision anything of any importance nor uncircumcision, but only a new creation, which is the result of a new birth, a spiritual transformation, a new nature in Christ Jesus. Peace 
and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, who discipline themselves and conduct their lives by this principle, and upon the true Israel of God, Jewish believers. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Anne. Let us pray. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. You're such a good God. You are a God of freedom. And so free our minds. Help me interpret your word this morning, Lord, and help your children understand it. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and occupy this place and be with each and everybody who is listening to this. Amen. Well, to all those who are here in the sanctuary and to those that are listening online, welcome again. It is a very interesting passage. We read from Galatians in the Amplified Version, the Amplified Bible. As the Word says, it amplifies. Uh, you know, I grew up reading the New King, I mean, the King James Version and the New King James. And that's why you see me when I do my Lord's Prayer, my King James Version kicks in. And... Uh, Later on, I explored the Amplified, and it was so good. It helped me understand because it doesn't change any meaning. It just amplifies what is supposed to be there. It just makes the sentence more longer and your Bible a little bigger. And I wanted Anne to read from that text because I wanted us to start preparing as we hear those words. We're going to be talking about real freedom. A lot of people don't know what freedom is today. They think going around and doing things is freedom. A lot of people have a very different concept. People... Um, that were not, not part of a freedom struggle or any wars may not even remember how it was, what kind of a struggle it was. Sometimes it means nothing to people who do not realize that there was a lot of struggle. Freedom does not come for free. I wanted to be mindful of this concept of freedom, this gift of freedom, and relate it or learn about this real freedom that God has given to us. And Paul talks about it. Paul says, where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. Meaning, sin ruins people's lives, but when God's grace comes through, when it comes through salvation, it, re it restores you and I. It restores the man and woman and makes their lives even more beautiful than ever before. Because when sin abounds, grace does abound much more. Sin is, is supposed to destroy, if you did not notice that. When sin comes into a life, somebody's life, your life, my life, its only purpose is to destroy. But grace can repair and rectify the damage, redeem, and make everything beautiful. Today, I want to talk to you about how faith in Christ brings us to a life of freedom. 
the cross of Jesus Christ, our faith in the cross, and what happens there, bringing us into freedom. Today's definition of freedom is, freedom is doing whatever I want. Freedom is doing whatever you want. Or being able to do whatever we all want. In simple words, freedom is self-determination for you or me without any limits. I'm talking about today's modern days, world's definition of freedom that I keep hearing from everywhere, okay? This is not what I'm preaching. I want you to understand. They, whoever defines modern definition of freedom, would say nobody should limit people in any way. They should be able to do whatever they want to do because they have the freedom. Freedom for them is self-determination without limits. In a recent interview that I was watching on television, I don't watch a lot of television, but I, um, I got this little antenna, a digital antenna where you can plug in and it picks up all kinds of things from Washington till Salem, Oregon. It's pretty cool. So you get all kinds of uh, different news stations. And there was a person on the TV, there was an interview, and uh, you, know, you may call the person a celebrity, uh, so they, that's why they were doing an interview. And the, the person interviewing was asking the celebrity, so what is freedom for you? And uh, the celebrity, she said, the important thing about freedom is you must not let others limit what you want to do. Then the interviewer asks her, have you had that freedom? Have you had that freedom in your life? She thought about it for a bit and she said, yes, of course, but you are also not free when you are in love. But fortunately, you cannot be in love all the time. I thought it was, it was a little interesting there. Did you hear that? She said, yes, I am free. But then you cannot be free if you're in love. But the good thing is, she says, that you're not always in love. So apart from when I am in love, I'm free, is what she said. She says when you're in love, you cannot be free. What it means is, when you are in a love relationship or when you are married to somebody, you cannot be completely free because now you got to understand the other person, work with the other person. Right? It's not like my way or the highway. You are bound because that relationship demands that you do certain things. And you are restricted in certain ways. Many people look at marriage or love relationship where people are tied up. That is today's definition. Modern definition of freedom says you cannot live in a love relationship or marriage without some kind of attention. According to the de uh, that definition, one cannot be in a love relationship or in a marriage if you want to be free. This is the world's definition of a commitment or marriage or a love relationship. According to the world's definition of freedom, of marriage, or love relationship, the, the original meaning of freedom becomes very difficult here because love relationship demands that you get along with the other person. Consider the other person, love the person, and more. But the Bible's definition of marriage is totally different. The Bible's definition of freedom 
of all this thing that we talked about is totally different. Paul says, you have been called to liberty. In Galatians 5.13, we read, you, my brothers and sisters, we are called to be free. Christianity sets people free, my friends. But, but in what way? It sets people free from all the things that they are bound by sin, because of sin, because sin has ruined people. People live with a lot of baggages, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of jealousy, a lot of strife, a lot of bitterness, and more. And that makes life very complicated. But Paul says, you have been called to liberty, which is freedom, free from all those things, and stop being a slave to all those things. Life of sin is a life of slavery. But Christian life is a life of liberty. Paul says in verse 13 of chapter 5, then he says, continue, let's continue to read that. Galatians 5.13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. He says you're called to be free. Free to do what? Free to do what you want, but, but there is a Condition, don't use that freedom, don't use that liberty as an opportunity to satisfy your flesh. And what does this flesh want? All kinds of nonsense. Paul wrote this a long time ago, and I can still verify, you can still verify, what the flesh wants has got nothing to do with the Bible. It's got nothing to do with what God's will or purpose in our life is. And that's what we're reading here today. The word freedom means self-determination without limits. Do what you want, says the world. But the Bible says you have been called to freedom. And don't use that freedom in a wrong way. That's a very big difference, my friends. The Bible gives a brilliant answer to the misinterpretations of the world's meaning yesterday, today, and even tomorrow. If you continue reading the rest of the chapter 5 in Galatians, you'll see how one should exercise that freedom. I know that we had a small text. You know, I was preparing for this, this sermon, and I started, you know, putting this um, that Anne was reading the text that Anne was reading. And then I thought, man, there's a lot more in this, in this chapter that we need. And so I'm going to read it. Galatians 5, and I'm going to read from 14. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Did you see that? But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debentry, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fit of rage, self-ambition, dissension, factions, and envy and drunkenness and orgies and like that. It goes on. Oh, my goodness. I warn you, says Paul. As I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit, what? The kingdom of God. 
Did you hear that? Man, that's totally contradictory to what we heard from the world. Let's continue reading. He gives a long list of works of the flesh. And then he says in Galatians 5.22, But the, spirit of the, sp the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Are you awake? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what Paul said? Did you hear what Galatians said in this text? Oh my goodness, no wonder why I wanted to read this. Because I started preparing for this, this sermon and I said, without all these things, what is freedom to me? What is freedom to you? With all those freedom of I can do what I want, I will end up destroying your freedom. You will destroy, you will destroy my freedom. And we will together destroy everybody's freedom. That's what will happen. There is a path here. You know, I studied political science. I studied, you know, I wanted to be a diplomat at some point, if you uh, heard my story. So I studied all these different things, uh, different countries, laws, and st things like that. And we talked, you know, I was, uh, I was always interested in the freedom because it's free. It's, you know, it's not free. It's like I'm free to do things. But then I found out freedom, real freedom, and, you know, and according to a lot of uh, different democracies, is you're free to do a lot of different things as long as you do not interrupt my freedom. You know, as long as you don't touch my nose, you know, you can, you can wave your hands. <laughs> don't, don't just put it on my face. Paul is giving us a pathway. He is giving us a blueprint on how you can use this freedom that God has given to us. Without that, there will be chaos. The world says... A different thing, right? But the Bible is totally different. I'm going to just meditate on verse 10 and 13, but all these verses are so very important. So I would encourage that you concentrate and meditate on all those things as well. He says, do not live a life of bondage. A life before you come to Christ is a life of bondage, full of sin. Sin looks so good, like we want to sneak out and do a lot of different things. It's so attractive. There are so many sayings in so many different languages where you want to do things in secret. Oh, it's so good when you do it the first time. And then you want to cover it up. And then you find more ways to cover it up. Lies and deceit and all kinds of things. A life in sin is a sin full of baggage. A life of bondage. Sin dominates your life and you're bound by it. But now when Christ comes in, you're set free. Free in serving one another. What is a Christian freedom? It's one where, the, where Christ comes and gives you the salvation through the cross of Calvary, and now you're free from that sin that took you bondage. And now you can go out and live your life free, originally how God intended it to be. Paul is telling the Galatians, the people in Galatians, you believe in Jesus Christ. You know, these, these people in Galatians, they are, they've, they are converts. They've, they are now believers in Jesus Christ. They got baptized and they are born again believers, but they are young believers. And then, the, you know, these um, Judaizers or, Juda, you know, the Jews that, that are kind of in a confused state are the legalizers, 
go to these new converts and they say, you get circumcised, you follow the law, and do, you do these things and th those things and so on, and then you can lead a, a life, you know, that God has intended for you. Paul is telling the Galatians people, you believe in Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And as a saved person, you live a new life. And you will follow what the law says after you are a saved person in this new life. Because now the Holy Spirit is instructing you as well. But these people, the legalizers, they are telling these new converts the exact opposite. They're saying, you believe in Jesus Christ, that's okay. But now... You follow the law because that is the most important thing. That is the most important thing. Following the law is what will get you saved is what they are saying, which is not what Paul was saying. And they are saying only if you follow the law, salvation will come to you. Did you hear that? That, was not, that is not why Jesus came. It was the other way. Jesus gave you the new life. And because of that, you follow the law. You're already redeemed. You're already saved. Now, this was a confusing statement. They're saying, you are set free. But that freedom comes only at the end. You have to do a certain way of things, right? You have to follow the law. You have to get circumcised. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do all your works to get your liberty, your freedom, your salvation. But Jesus gave you that salvation through the cross. Nobody has to, you know, I mean, there's a lot of debates uh, about, you know, are you saved now or are you, are you saved later? Well, you're saved when you believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, 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 you can fall back into sin. That is not the question. But salvation is given. We can confuse all we want, but this is in the Bible, my friends. And if you are hearing some stories like that, go back to this text. This is for you. This is for the, all those people that are confusing, confusing you. Don't be confused, okay? It's very, very clear here. Paul teaches these things to the people in Galatians. And he wanted to make sure that the message is clear. He's telling, you believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But those people, the legalizers, were saying the exact opposite. Paul says, once you put your faith in Christ, you are now saved. And thereafter you do the, the works as a saved person. Paul says, do not go back into it. Do not go back into your old life. Keep your freedom that God has brought into your lives. So what is freedom? This radical freedom that Christianity talks about, that is bringing about Jesus Christ into your life, and how to keep that freedom because Jesus in your life is the message of Christianity. And how to keep that freedom. You know, we were praying for this nation. We prayed thanking God for the freedom in this nation. But we also want to thank God in advance for helping us keep this freedom. And that is important in our lives too. We are free by the salvation, but we need to keep it. Paul says two things in this, in this chapter, in this text that we read. Chapters 5 and 6. Paul says two things. First, the first thing is, you got to clearly understand that the message of the cross comes as an offense. You heard me right. The, the message of the cross comes to you as an offense. You got to get over that offense. To believe in the gospel. The Christian preaching offends everybody. The Christian preaching offends everybody because the, the teachings of Jesus 
sounds so good and wonderful. People like Christ, most people like Christ, people who don't even go to church, people who don't even claim to be, you know, Christians. They seem to like Christ in some way. They say, he's a good man. He was a good man. You know, look at Sermon on the Mount. Such a wonderful sermon. Such a wonderful message for humanity. Jesus was a good man. They don't have any problem with that. But they are offended by the story of the cross. That Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, and the message that says that it is the death on that cross of Calvary that saved you and me. That is offensive to a lot of people. Because the message of the cross says Jesus had to come from heaven and die for you and me. Because of that one person, humanity is saved. That is offensive. How dare you say that somebody had to come and die? So you're saying that all my good life, I've been following all the laws, I've been a good person in my life. You're saying that I am not saved by doing all these things? How dare you? My friends, there was not a single person on earth that was able to save you and me. And there will be no one on this earth that will be able to save you and me. That is why God had to send his son, Jesus Christ, to come and take your place and my place on that cross so that you and I can live a life that is free. And this message offends Many people, they say, what do you mean? What do you mean? But the interesting thing is, and, and I don't know if I can say interesting thing, but it is sad that some who have graduated seminary, some that have taken charges as pastors and churches, they get offended by that, that message. They like to preach about all the sweet things that Jesus said. Yes, Jesus said sweet things. Jesus is love. But he came and he died for you and me. That was his purpose on this earth. That is why he was born. That is why he was here. And that offends a lot of people. They say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I like this good man, Jesus Christ. But I don't know all these other things that you're talking about. Well, I'm not talking about it. The Bible talks about it. And so I'm talking about it. The message of the gospel is offensive. That is what Paul says here. Paul says in Galatians 5.11, Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Now, if we are going to preach about the laws and the circumcision and all these other things other than the cross, then the cross will not be very offensive because we can cover up the cross. Let's cover up the cross. We don't need that cross. Then everybody will start liking you and I. As Christians, you, you know, we'll be the most favored group in this world because we will give people of the rest of the world who hate us a message that doesn't offend them. It'll be all good message. Everything is going to be all right. See, that's why uh, some people like all those good songs, right? You know, we were, we were recently in Puerto Rico, and, you know, there was some very good music there. There was also a, a reggae concert going on right next to our conference hall. So after finishing it, you know, just coming out, you can listen to all the songs. All the songs were about, it's going to be all right. It is all good. Things will be okay. Now, all that message is necessary for us. Because we need some hope. But that message is already given by God. He's not just saying it's going to be okay. He's saying, I am going to be with you. And so you are going to be okay. You're not just going to be just okay, but you're going to be victors. You're going to be successful. If Paul was preaching circumcision, then he's saying, if you're circumcised, you are in the kingdom of God. But he, that's not what he was saying. He says, if I preach like that, if I was preaching about the law, about circumcision, 
then we don't need to talk about the cross. And nobody's going to be upset about the cross. The reason, reason why my preaching could be a little, little bit offensive is because it contains Christ. And not just any Christ. Listen to this. We got Christ crucified. The crucified Christ. In 1 Corinthians 1.22, Jews demanded signs and Greek look for wisdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, we read, Jews demanded signs and Greeks looked for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. See, I'm not making up these things, my friends. Okay? But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. Not only was the Jews, but the Greeks were also finding it very offensive. I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about those days. They were still offended by this message. They would be saying, do you mean that my circumcision, my life of following this law means nothing? Do I have to still believe all this nonsense about some man coming and dying and being resurrected and saving me? Yes. Without that salvation, we are nothing. My friends, that was the first message. The second one, we can read, now that you're over that offense, now that you've crossed over that offense, right? Now that you're not offended by the cross, now that you're not offended by the crucified Christ, you will become a person who will boast only on the cross. Just like what Paul is saying, you will say in your life, I boast nothing but the cross of Christ Jesus. The cross of Jesus Christ. That's the truth, my friends. Paul says in Galatians 6, 14, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the, to the Israel of God. Peace and mercy to all who follow. Peace and mercy is what you will have when you are truly free, when you are really free, and that is real freedom. Boasting in the cross is what I will do. Boasting in the cross only, and that is the true freedom. Do you boast in the cross today? This is something that you can check for yourself. If you boast in the cross and the cross only, that is the proof that you are a Christian celebrating the true freedom. Because without that cross, we can not have salvation. We cannot celebrate our, our true freedom. Let's all stand up. We're going to pray. I want to give thanks to God for all his goodness, for the freedom that he's given to me. Not only the freedom, but, but for the instructions that comes with it on how I can celebrate this freedom. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We thank you, Lord, for these words that we heard today. Thank you for your wonderful grace, O oh God. Thank you for your cross has made everything possible for us. We are free today because of your cross, because of what you've done for us on the cross. Thank you for setting us free and help us maintain this freedom with which you have set us free, this liberty, this freedom that you have given to us. 
Help us not to use it in a bad way where our flesh will overtake. But help us to use it in, as an opportunity to serve one another in love, just as the Word of God says. Bless each and every one here and those that are listening online. May they be blessed by your word. May their hearts rejoice as a result of what they heard today. May they boast in you, O Lord, and celebrate the freedom now and forevermore. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Son, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. is a message that the world needs to hear. That the cross is the only hope and the freedom comes only through Calvary. And this, my friends, the significance of our communion, the communion that we celebrate every time, is a, is a result of all those things that happened on the cross. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he used the symbol of broken bread to represent his broken body and the symbol of a cup to represent his blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And according to the Gospel of Mark, it was on that night as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take this, my body. This is my body. God, our loving Father, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ for the sacrifice that was made on the cross so that we are free today. And we'll bless your name. Amen. Please eat. it to them and they all drank of it and he said to them this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many 
Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Ushers, you are welcome to come forward and take your wine. If the mic is still on. <laughs> now this is the blood of Jesus that washes away our sin and makes us all a part of the family of God. Would you partake with me? What a joyful moment this is as we celebrate God, the Son of God through the communion. This is also the part where we transition into our contemporary worship service. But we invite you to, um, you know, go on to the prayer room or stick around and have some uh, fellowship in the fellowship hall or go about doing your, your thing that God has called you to do throughout this week. May God bless you. And as you continue to worship, those of you that continue to worship, let's celebrate God and give thanks in everything through contemporary worship music. So once we're redeemed, we still may struggle with addiction. go again around this mountain I've been it's the same thing I'm running from and though I was set free sin caught a hold of me and I'm right back where I started from so here's the fix I'm in Stronghold with the typical sin And it's got me on the run I get the answers when I call on my Savior and friend The only one I can't hide from Calling on grace Calling on grace Calling on grace to rescue me I still have the faith and the victory I'm calling on grace to cover me There's nothing I can do About what I've been through It's all been Still I get confused When I take my eyes off you And put them on the things I've done Calling on grace Calling on grace Calling on grace to rescue me 
I still have the faith that I'm victory. I'm calling on grace to set me free. Life are beyond the man's control, like the rescue of a heart and the saving of his soul. Calling on grace, calling on grace, calling on grace to rescue me. I still have the faith and the victory. Calling on grace to cover me. Calling on grace. Calling on grace. Calling on grace to rescue me. I still have the faith and the victory. I'm calling on grace to cover me. Here I go again, out of this desert I'm in, straight into the promised land. You are not alone, if you are lonely, when you feel afraid, you're not the only, we are all the same. In need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. It's all you've got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Weak or strong, you know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. If he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted, the pure of heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another star. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross My sin upon his shoulder Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice.
call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Oh, your name is my first defense And oh, your name is my last amen It carries me when I cannot stand It reaches me when I reach the end Jesus, your name, when the whole world shakes Jesus, your name, I will ever praise. My battle cry every night and day. I'll sing your name over everything. I'll sing your name over everything. Oh, your is my greatest strength it fights for me and it won't relent I cast my cares every burden fall for there's one name that can bear them all Jesus your name when the whole world shakes Jesus your name I will ever praise my battle cry every night and day. I'll sing your name over everything. I'll sing your name over everything. In every storm, you're the prince of peace. The Lord of all, you are heaven's king. I'll sing your name till my last breath here. Then I'll sing again with my first breath there. Jesus, your name, when the whole world shakes. Jesus, your name, I will ever my battle cry every night and day I'll sing your name over everything Jesus your name when the whole world shakes Jesus your name I will ever praise 
my battle cry every night and day I'll sing your name over everything I'll sing your name over everything Jesus I'll sing your name over everything my God I'll sing your name over everything luncheon down below. Hey, let me pray for you guys as we go. Lord Jesus, thank you for all of the people that gathered in this place to move against the values of the city and to proclaim your name. Amen. This is the time where we'll go downstairs and we have a lunch. If you're still sticking around, we'd love to have you down there.